Hello everyone, welcome. <laughs> I did not, ding. Um, I did film a whole setup video and they're not completely done yet because I need to talk about these books that I read in July and then I can put them on the shelves. So yeah, but I love them. So that video will be coming after this one, I think. So look forward to it. So in July, I read a lot of books. I don't know how it happened. Um, I was doing a mix of physical reading, audiobook, and ebook. I was, I, I don't know, like that's what I did with my free time. So I read 15 books, which is like a lot. <laughs> okay, that's not normal. But like I said, I also just read a lot of good books in July. So yeah, when I'm reading good books, it makes me want to keep reading. So that's great. There's like something on my eye. Got it. <laughs> okay. Of the 15 books, seven of them were five stars. Can you believe that? It's crazy. So I'm going to talk about the five stars first. Okay. Cause why not? And let's just, ah, what do I even do? There's so many books. Okay. First of all, discovered the naturals this month and love it so much. If you missed it, I did do a reading blog, reading the naturals because this was one of your guys's recommendations. And I read two books. This was one of them. Absolutely love this series. Okay. So highly recommend. These are the first three books. There's one more book and I am currently reading it. So it's language free. There's like a little bit like they say hell and like stuff like that, but like nothing major. And then there's only kissing and it's more so pining, like such good pining. Okay. And then the action and the mystery is so good too. Hi everyone. Inserting this into my wrap up because I did just finish Bad Blood and it's not, well, it's August 1st now, but I finished this yesterday and I just want to like give some disclaimers because this book upped the factors that like I wouldn't recommend this for a younger audience anymore so maybe hold off on letting your kids read the series or just they could read the first three and then like wait a couple of years or something to read this one just because it goes dark and dark as in there's some torture scenes described there's cults and like rituals with like torture and blood and really messed up stuff <laughs> and I have I don't think I mentioned this ever but there's perspectives before each chapter most of the time that start with you and then it's like kind of like a foreshadow or a little bit of a hint of like who the bad guys are and I throughout these books have actually been skipping those because I don't find them interesting and I kind of get creeped out by them <laughs> so I don't read them but I started reading them a little bit in this book just because of the discoveries that our characters were making. I wanted to see if I could get some hints. And yeah, reading those parts was the most dark. So if you just skip the you sections, which are they're usually like a page or two, then it's mostly fine. Um, but the kind of big like climax epic scene is about like fighting to the death and like it goes pretty intense um so i would just caution for that reason that maybe it's not young reader friendly um like i thought it was like to me the first three books are still young reader friendly but this one it just brought it to the next level and i don't know when this one released like maybe she kind of aged it up aged it up with her readers like this came out in 2016 so I don't know, but just want to caution there, like if parents are following my reviews and stuff. Oh, and then also in this book, it kind of is hinted at so mildly and brief briefly at the end of the third book. But in this book, there is some feelings between two girls that are like mildly brought up, but it is there. So I just want to say that there's like some girl girl situation and you know, just, just so you know. And then there is no language in this one, but yeah, there's a lot of blood. Okay. Some torture, but I was so thoroughly entertained. I get, ended up giving this 4.5 stars and four on Goodreads just because I want to caution people. Like I would say this is a five star read as well for me, because I think like the twists that she put in here were so good. So for me, I really enjoyed it. But as a recommendation, like just some caution, some trigger warnings, all the things. But 
yeah still like really excited to have read this book and I will say I did find a way to read the 12 novella online so I am reading it and I'm excited about that so I should finish it pretty quick here but it's five years in the future of these characters so that's been really fun to revisit them but yeah I just wanted to let you guys know that because I did have some questions on my Goodreads review and then I know that I hype it up a lot in my wrap up the first three books and then all of a sudden this book I'm like whoa <laughs> like this went a little bit more intense than the first three books were so just wanted to say that carry on I think the writing is great it's so witty and funny like the author is so clever and for her to like weave stories all throughout this series like she just must have had to plan this so well and you can see the skill that it took and I love it so I gave the first two like a solid five stars the third one is kind of more like a 4.75 because there were some parts where I was like mm, it focused a little bit more on the mystery than like the characters, if that makes sense. Like they took a lot of time to try to figure out this mystery because it was quite elaborate, this one. And that like lost my interest just a touch. But by this book, you're like fully invested in the characters and how they're gonna like figure out their lives. I'll link my young adult recommendation video down below that I made in July because I talk more thoroughly about these books in that video, but okay, next are you kidding me <laughs> so this is never fall again by lynn blackburn love this book okay five stars lynn blackburn new favorite romantic suspense author for sure like i have given all of her books four stars or higher and she just writes like this almost feels like just christian contemporary romance with a touch of suspense slash mystery my favorite thing okay my favorite thing and this one was really light on the mystery okay like there was some arson going on and some like vandalism but it was like fairly mild what was happening was these characters like developing feelings and then you know talking about it and then maybe like confessing their love and it was so stinking cute i love these characters i love it so you follow this woman who has a daughter and she recently bought some land from and actually okay it's quite elaborate i'm not going to go into too many details because like it's hard to explain but basically she bought some land from a woman in a big family and in this small town there's two big families that are rivals it's a little bit like romeo and juliet style and her love interest is a guy from one of the other families so like her friend is from a family the love interest is from the other family but those two get along See, this is kind of confusing, but it, it makes sense when you read it, so whatever. But it's mainly about her, like, being adopted into this family, a lot of found family, so many good characters. I love the brother dynamic in here. I like that the romance was over the mystery, because the mystery, like, was pretty mild. I didn't ever feel, like, worried that things weren't going to work out. Like, it was honestly just a super feel-good story, and I really enjoyed it. I loved the way the characters communicated. The faith was so good. They were praying and just thinking about it, and, like, I loved this book. <laughs> okay, I really loved it. Is this my favorite Lynn Blackburn? It might be. I will say Malicious Intent is definitely a runner-up, which is right here. Um love this book but I would have to read this again to know because this is like more fresh I love this book okay so just saying five stars feels good like just a little bit cold you guys <laughs> we went from summer to fall like pretty quick here um but still wearing a Hawaii shirt okay another five star romantic suspense is Captured in Frame by Laura Thomas this was a free ARC copy that I got from the publisher and the author and I ended up giving it five stars because again loved the characters loved the romance this one definitely had a stronger mystery thread and that was like kind of the main driving force of the book and then like along the way the characters fell in love and like we're seeing their relationship develop but this girl's family has a lot of issues, okay? They're tied up in a lot of issues. So basically, you follow this Canadian woman who moves to England because she has a cottage there. I forget how she ended up having the cottage, but she bought it with her ex-husband who she just found out died. So then she's like, I need a fresh start. I'm moving to England. And her sister happens to live there too. So she 
moves in like down the street from her sister and then the other sister in this family lives in Paris so it's only like a European setting which was fun and weird things start happening to her at the cottage there's like obvious break-ins and she's like what's going on they're leaving like weird creepy threats and like she gets run off the road and just stuff is happening so someone's after her and she doesn't know why and she's slowly figuring out things that her husband was involved in and then along the way there is a doctor who has to like check in on her and they meet at church and he's like so sweet he's a single dad to a really cute boy and I loved it. Okay, it was a super quick read. It's a shorter book, but highly recommend it. I believe it releases in August, so you can get it now and definitely check it out. I'll leave the links below because I for sure highly recommend this book. It had good faith content. It was a solid like Christian romantic suspense, and I definitely will continue reading from this author. Okay, technically I did reread Powerless in July, so I might as well just say it's another five star. I love this book. I love it, I love it, I love it. So now I can put it on the shelf. <laughs> okay, my last five star is called The Next Worst Thing by Sarah Jane Woodley, I think. It's been a while and I don't own this book because I listened to it on audiobook. I was like really impressed with the writing style. I definitely felt like she was kind of a more like elevated quality indie published romance writer. Okay, wanna know why I love this book so much? <laughs> it's a brother's best friend trope. And that is my favorite trope, okay? Put a brother in there, give him a best friend, make the girl fall in love with the best friend? Yes, okay? So the premise is this girl's brother is getting married and she helps organize the wedding and his best friend is the best man and the two of them have to like help organize the wedding. But they are kind of like enemies at the beginning in the sense that like they've always like not gotten along but it's more so lighthearted. They just kind of like bicker and pick fun at each other, but in a very lighthearted way. And then they start to question like, do I actually like this person? I think I do. And it, it wasn't annoying or cheesy. Like it was actually so cute and very entertaining. And I liked the writing style. I liked the banter and like the dialogue and just the whole progression of this story so easy so entertaining like this is the kind of like indie romance that i would want to read and yeah i gave it five stars because like of the indie romance that i have read this is one of the best in my opinion so highly recommend i liked it a lot so now for my four stars of the month first up is reckless by lauren roberts so this is the sequel to powerless and i have a whole separate reading vlog for this book so if you're interested in my thoughts I will leave it down below. It's spoiler free, but you do have to have read Powerless before watching the video. I don't spoil Powerless a ton. Like I don't talk details really, but like it'll give away kind of like where the direction of the story is going if you watch this without reading Powerless. So anyways, um, I enjoyed it, but my main thing is it felt rushed and it felt like the plot was kind of just there to push the characters together and I loved reading the banter. I loved reading about Peyton and Kai together, but I also liked Powerless because of the plot. Like both of those together is what made it so amazing. Whereas this, like the characters, the romance made it amazing, but the plot would have made it five stars, but the plot was lacking in my opinion. So that is why I gave it four stars, but I still love this series. Can't wait for the next book. The ending of this book, like, I, I didn't see it coming because I skipped some certain parts that I shouldn't have, but it is what it is. <laughs> um, so you get a third perspective in this book and that perspective was like, I don't care about them. So I like pretty much skimmed them and didn't read into it much. And doing that means I had no idea that the ending was coming. So I was like, what? Like what? Like it, it actually doesn't make any sense to me and I really hope the third book explains why it makes sense because it just doesn't make sense. So it makes me even more like desperate for the next book and I can't wait. So yeah, um, I do recommend. Um, I've had people ask like if this series is clean. So um, it is clean. There's only ever kissing slash touching but like touching the face. <laughs> okay, nothing about nothing else. And the and and the waist and stuff. Um but there is some language. Um never the F word, but the S H I T word and other words like 
milder than that okay to me the f word is like the worst you could ever say and then it like just whatever so i think this is appropriate for teenagers i would say 16 and up 16 and up could enjoy this fine and be totally fine so okay you would have just seen these two books in my most recent vlog reading your guys' recommendations, The Blonde Identity, I gave four stars, and Fairest of Heart, I gave four stars. So yeah, um, I recommend watching that video, but The Blonde Identity is adult suspense, romantic suspense, and the main takeaway here is that Ali Carter can write a really entertaining, fast-paced story, but since this is adult, there was a lot of language, multiple F-bombs all throughout, so if you don't like reading language, do not read this book but you follow spies so you follow this girl she wakes up with no memories and this spy guy like rescues her and they end up like teaming up to figure out what's going on um she has a twin sister and you're figuring out what's up with the twin sister because the spy thinks she's the twin sister not her so there's that and it was really entertaining super enjoyed it loved the progression of the plot and the romance this is closed door there is a scene but it's closed door you know they're about to go off and do it but there's no detail so that was really great and i really loved the ending i liked the message like overall really enjoyed it gave it four stars and then for Fairest of Heart by Karen Wittemeyer, this is a fairy tale retelling and it is Christian historical romance. And this was really fun. I was so surprised. I didn't think I was going to like it. But yeah, the Snow White retelling part of it is this girl is an orphan and she ends up working under this like really beautiful lady who's not very nice to her. And things happen. She gets kicked out and she gets saved by these seven older men that are like the seven dwarves. And then there's also like a ranger who is her love interest. And it was so cute, so funny, like just a really sweet story. And there was definitely like some intense parts near the end of like, you know, the Snow White story. She definitely follows that storyline. And I was like, oh no, but yeah, it was a good ending and really enjoyed it. Loved the faith content in here too. So highly recommend. I've seen amazing reviews for this. A lot of people love this book and I see why because it was definitely really fun and I'm glad I read it. Okay, so on to 3.5. So I know that I just gave five stars to the next worst thing. Well, the right wrong match is the sequel and I gave it 3.5 because I think maybe three on Goodreads, four on Goodreads, I'm not sure. Loved the premise, loved the setup because this is best friend's brother yeah okay so the girl from the first book's brother is with the girl's best friend in this book and so of course love any kind of best friend trope it was a solid start but i just found this story like just not that great not that great compared to the next worst thing like i don't know it was so too bad but basically this girl has a dating app that is like fairly popular and she makes a mistake on it and ends up asking every guy she's ever matched with out on a date at the same time and so she is at this coffee shop and all of these dudes show up including this guy brother and he's like what's going on and she's like i don't know like whatever and so then they connect over that and so that was really funny i was like oh this is gonna be good but then i just found that they weren't communicating and it, there just weren't enough like cute things to keep me interested. It was more so just like, come on, come on. We don't need to keep doing this. Like, so it didn't work for me as well. Um, it was still like clean and no language and I would still recommend it, but I could have done without it too. Like it, I didn't, don't feel like it added to anything. Okay, then <laughs> three stars for The Last Sin Eater by Francine Rivers. This is the weirdest book I've ever read. Okay, weirdest Christian fiction I've ever read. It is like, I don't even know how to describe it. It like, in a way it feels like magical realism, but it's not. But like, it was described in a way where I was like, what is even real? I don't understand. So you follow this like olden times community where they believe that for them to be cleansed of their sins, like they believe in God, but they, they believe that there has to be a human being like sacrifice so that if you die all of your sins go to this person so basically like a stand-in for jesus they, they they basically don't know that jesus exists 
and it's like yeah what if like you didn't know that Jesus existed but you knew about God and you knew that you had to like be cleansed of your sins so the sin eater is the person who is like elected to be the person who takes all the sins of the people and so they always have to be around people that are about to die because they have to like take their sins and that part was so confusing to me at the beginning like I just did not even get it and the language in this book was really hard to read because it was there was so much slang and so much like kind of hillbilly talk that sometimes I'm like I have no idea what that person just said like is that even English I don't know <laughs> because like it would be written that way so like things weren't spelled correctly and yeah so I don't know like I guess you could call it like an immersive experience but like not my thing because I don't like historical stuff so I was like huh and then the cool part was you follow this girl who meets basically like a prophet kind of style basically like a Luke type of, not Luke Paul <laughs> a Paul type character from the Bible and they tell her about Jesus and so she like believes it and she starts to think like we don't need the sin eater like nothing this human can do will save us from our sins like it's Jesus only so that's the story but there's a lot of like people stuck in their ways and they don't want to give up the sin eater and yeah so yeah <laughs> like it was it was basically the writing style and the whole premise I was like I don't I what so three stars probably could have given it two but like I liked the audiobook. I, I listened to it on audio, but there were like several chapters where I was like, no idea what just happened. Couldn't couldn't tell you. I have I don't understand. <laughs> so that was too bad. So weird. Didn't know that Francine Rivers had it in her, in her to write this, but there you go. So if that sounds interesting to you, give it a try. Okay, then I read Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. This is the sequel to Divine Rivals. And I gave this three stars, same as Divine Rivals. I will say I liked it better than Divine Rivals, but so maybe like Divine Rivals should be two and a half stars because I would not give Ruthless Vows three and a half stars for sure because I don't get it. Like, please explain. This is not romance to me. Like, yes, there's romance in it, but we're following a war story. Like that, that's what this is. And I don't like reading that. Like it's, I, it's, I just have no interest in reading about people at war. So that was the downfall of the series for me. Cause like, I ended up really liking Iris and Roman. I like their characters a lot. Oh, I said series. <laughs> so like the premise is you follow like London and in this world there's gods and two gods are at war. One god named Dacre is kind of the bad one. He like takes people and wipes their memories and gets them to do stuff for him. And then an the other god like calls people with a song kind of and then they fight on her behalf. And so humans are fighting each other but for these gods. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and like, why gods? That's the thing. Like, I don't understand the choices of this author, okay? But to each their own. This picks up right where Divine Rivals left off pretty much. And so you see what's going on. There's more note passing, more cute messages. And there are two like implied intimacy scenes and there's no language. And I just wouldn't recommend it. Like it's just not for me, but I could see why people would like it. Okay, another three star that was a pretty big letdown is The Real Fake Fiance by the same author, Sarah Jane Woodley, something like that. Like, I loved the first book, but these next two were like not that good. So this one, again, follows a character you met in the second one, and this is a best friends to lovers trope, but it has to be done well. Like, the best friends to lovers where it's just lying, like they end up fake being engaged, and she's like straight up lying to these like important businessmen and it's like how is this okay like i don't know like it, it has to be in a like has to be in a less high stakes situation for me to like be okay with it because in particular fake fiancéing fake fake engagement um is just straight up lying to me and i i don't like that like fake dating is a little bit more lighthearted to me and i i do enjoy that but 
I don't know it, it can't like go on too long and this one went on way too long like so I was just frustrated most of the time and uh, yeah again no communication frustrated so I gave that three stars and then my one 2.5 which is basically three stars as well is you belong with me by Terry Ferris this is in a video as well so I'll link it down below I was reading new to me authors I've never read from this author before and it was kind of the writing style that I wasn't that into and the characters like it was a good setup but the execution just wasn't there for me. It's this small town story where this girl like loves her small town. She's a real estate agent and she's trying to like keep the town local but there's like these big um, businessmen that are trying to come and buy out a whole bunch of things and she has a best friend who she's trying to like keep in her life but he likes her and she is not ready to talk about it and then you also follow her brother and he has a romance too and his is kind of like a second chance romance and i was more interested in his storyline but just none of the characters felt mature to me it was kind of just like a i don't know i just didn't like the writing and i didn't like how the characters were behaving so i would not probably read more in this series. I would try this author again, but would not recommend this series. So there we go. That was very long. That's a lot of books. I will write them all down below with their authors and I'll link videos down below that I mentioned. And I would be really curious to hear your guys' thoughts on some of these books. It's so interesting to hear when people have different opinions and why. So again, even if I didn't like some of these books, you might like them and then vice versa. Even if you didn't like a book, I guess I did. So that's great. Like we all are allowed to like different things. But thank you for watching this, you guys. I look forward to the rest of my videos for the month and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.